years. It's infuriating to not be able to really protect your property 24 seven against whatever is happening because we're 10 miles away from it because we don't live there full time. Okay, so I am not gonna put a panel up here. I just put an extra T-post there just so a vehicle can't get there. There's a pre pretty good drop off right there. So if they tried to pull up that direction, they'd go into the ditch. Not to mention, I wanna save the cattle panels, the rest of the ones I have to go along this fence line here so nobody can walk through there or drive through there. All right, well, the weather's starting to turn, so this is what we got done for now. It blocks everything that I wanted to block for right now, at least the immediate stuff. This panel right here is eventually gonna get framed out and put like some big casters on it to be able to roll it up. And then we'll put another small fencing piece there to be able to lock it to it. But this is what I had to be able to do this last minute, so this is what we did. We've got one panel here, one panel here, these are your standard 16 foot panels. And then the one here covering the majority of the drive. All right, well, we're home now. Cooled off, rehydrated. Man, it's hot today. It's October. It is not supposed to be near 90 in Illinois. <laughs> but as you can see, we got that work done. So I tried to film a little bit in the before and um, you probably only just saw the photos without any sound. So let me tell you a little bit of the story, what's happening. Uh, we bought that land a handful of years ago. We actually only started with five parcels. Sorry for the barking dog. We've got a whole bunch of neighborhood kids over right now and my dog wants to play and <laughs> he's in his kennel so he's not happy and he's loud. So because of that, I'm gonna try and make this quick. Um, so we bought that land a handful of years ago. We bought it just five acres and then we had the opportunity to buy the next parcel, which was another five acres. So we have a total of just a hair over 10 acres now. We bought that land with the goal of living on there full time, living there, that selling this place, this that would be our permanent homestead. We have tried again and again to sell this home to move out there, but something always stops us. Now they've changed the laws and the type of financing to get to build what we wanted to build initially would be very difficult. Well, it's not really difficult to get. It's difficult to get without it costing an arm and a leg in interest. And, and we just can't swallow that well, that paying so much more to the bank than that land was purchased for or will ever be worth, no matter what we put on it. We just can't do it. So now we have to think outside the box to get out there and we are and we're in the process of it and we have a couple of crazy ideas. They're all really exciting, at least to us they are, but some of them are a little crazy <laughs> and um, we've, we're kicking around those ideas and seeing what we can do legally and um, what we can do financially in the shortest timeline possible. But right now the problem we are facing is in the previous ownership of that land, somebody had told multiple people that they could use that land to hunt, for entertainment, for some horse race thing they do there every year, um, and they need some more rugged terrain to go down, that they could use that land. And nobody told them they couldn't use it anymore when that property changed ownership. 
So you saw those ruts in the road from some big old mud tires. Now we've got people driving up there putting huge ruts into, well, it's not really a driveway, but our easement, our entryway onto our land. And though it is nothing pretty or anything right now, we really don't need anybody putting big old ruts in our easement. So right now, fencing is our solution. We don't want permanent fencing yet because we're not totally sure what the layout is going to be of the homestead. I ended up only putting three panels up for right now. Now what is covered up is the easement, the main easement to get on to the property. I put a no trespassing sign up in, in right in front of that. You do have to cut the zip ties to get onto the property. Anybody could do that, but we're hoping it's gonna deter whoever is doing it from getting up there. It's a little more blunt. Don't come on here. Not, obviously not excited to have trespassers. It's infuriating to not be able to really protect your property 24 seven against whatever is happening because we're 10 miles away from it because we don't live there full time. It's very frustrating. And it also makes me hesitant to move forward on some of the other things that we are going to be doing soon, very soon, because I don't want anything to be damaged. It was really satisfying to be able to get up there and do something. Put some kind of something up there. I don't even really want to call it infrastructure. I mean, just something. We have fencing. We have a tiny bit of fencing, but we have fencing. We have something that marks our property. We have been clearing for quite some time now, just with a chainsaw and a machete. We've been carving out trails. We've been keeping it mowed and maintained and it's really beautiful out there. I do post a lot of little stories uh, when we're walking the trails and things on Instagram, so if you don't follow me on Instagram and you wanna see that, that's more of a daily, daily life thing. Whenever we get out there, I usually put that stuff up there, and if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description box for you to follow me there. You know, my husband's out there all the time. He hunts it. He's carved out most of those paths. He's got a huge, monstrous hunting blind out there. That thing is awesome, and He's out there all the time. He has this personal connection with that land now, which I think is awesome, but I haven't really been able to develop that yet, to have that bond out there, as gorgeous as it is out there, because I have not gotten my hands in the dirt. I haven't done things out there other than help him drag trees around when he's cutting them down. Today was the first thing that I did out there on my own, with my own two hands, and it felt great. It was hot. It was muggy and so uncomfortable. And it was the best thing I could have done today. And I am so excited to move forward with things and to share with you guys because our homestead dreams are finally coming true. So if you have not subscribed yet and you want to follow along with this homestead journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you get notified when a new video comes out. I am gonna be doing more homestead stuff. I do a ton of homeschooling stuff because we are homeschoolers and I haven't done so much homestead stuff because there's only so much you can do with a backyard homestead and so much you can show. If I show you my rabbits every day, you'd be a little bored. If I show you my garden every day, you'd be a little bored. Plus, everybody does that. If you currently follow us for our homeschooling journey, we are still obviously going to continue that. I will still be sharing a ton of homeschooling content. If you've been following for a while, you know that homesteading and the skills that you learn in homesteading is a big part of our homeschooling. So that will not change either. But this journey, our homestead journey, this is life changing. So it's gonna change the channel a little bit. And it's gonna change for the better. Nothing is going away. I don't want to scare anybody off, but there's definitely going to be more. So I'd love to have you join us.